uh, in manufacturing industries in the greater Lafayette area. So she uh, knows about manufacturing, if not directly, very, very much indirectly through other members of her family. And I think that's one of the things that makes her so important to this project. So I'll introduce, uh, let me just start with Brooklyn. If you want to set the stage, please. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Um, again, ready to work. Um, this initiative is an innovative opportunity for partnerships with business, education, and the public workforce system to build a talent pipeline while also working with long-term uh, long unemployed and getting them connected with local manufacturers. I'll skip through a few slides. Um, here we're going to really talk about our focus or we'll say our challenges. Um, again, we work with long-term unemployed. That's those individuals that have been unemployed for 27 plus weeks. Um, also, what falls into that is underemployed. Those individuals who have maybe been laid off and have been obtaining marginal employment and have not found a job that was commensurate to their pay level um, or job skill that they had had previously. We also focus through the grant on nearly unemployed or other unemployed. That's 15%, um, which is 120 individuals throughout the life cycle of the grant. Um, we really started intake in the grant this spring in April. Um, however, we were given the grant um, November 1st of 2014. So we just completed our first year um, and we're just really excited. At this point, we've served over 104 participants since launching in April. Um, we've had 70 that have gone into training and 62 that have successfully completed. So um, it's been a great launch and we just continue that trajectory forward. Um, again, our focus is advanced manufacturing. Um, our goal is to have 600 enrolled in training and a 75% entered employment rate for the grant. Um, at this point, I'll turn it over to Brad, but I will say as you continue to look at the premier employers and educators uh, on the screen is that it really takes a village to get this launched and it's taken a lot of support from our community partners, educators, and local manufacturers to, to get this launched and get this going um, in the greater Lafayette area and in the Kokomo area. Brad? Oh, well, thank you, Brooklyn. Uh, first, I would uh, probably get in trouble if I didn't at least have a commercial uh, thrown up here for Subaru and employment. So I need 1,200 people by June, so if anybody knows anyone that needs a job, <laughs> that would help me out quite a bit. Um, and that's actually no, no real, you know, jokes aside, it, it is a ser serious situation in Indiana, and specifically Tippecanoe County. Uh, we are growing rapidly. Uh, as Roger pointed out, we're adding the Subaru Impreza and also our new uh, three-row, eight-passenger crossover vehicle. That vehicle is going to be launched sometime in 2017-2018. Our current employment right now at SIA is about 4,000 people. We're going to be over 5,000 by the end of 2016. So I seriously do need 1,200 people. And, and this kind of program, RAMP, was designed to help skill up some of those uh, potential employees that may not have the skill set to get into advanced manufacturing. Some of them possibly was displaced in 2008, 2009 timeframe, or even some of our recent high school grads that have walked out of high school thinking that they were going to take on the world and realize the world was much bigger than they thought and they went back home. Uh, so they need some direction. I think mom and dad is trying to get them out of the basement or out of their room and get, get them actually to work. So what this program is, is set up to do is to give a lot of those soft skills and a lot of those hands-on skills to prepare them for advanced manufacturing. Uh, one thing uh, that is, is great about advanced manufacturing besides having a good career is it's good wages and good benefits. So the first thing people see is that good wage mark. Oh, I can go do that advanced manufacturing. I want to make that $25 an hour, right? I want, to, I want to make and have that career. It's not that easy. And this kind of program really helps students understand the complexity and, and the dedication it takes to build a vehicle that you want to take your families on a, on a vacation with, right? I mean, you want to be able to drive down the road and, and know that the car that you're driving in is safe for your family. That has to be built by Hoosiers like us in advanced manufacturing. We have to give them the tools and the skill set to develop their, their abilities to build that vehicle with a high, high quality standard and high productivity. 
not only is it important for us for those folks in that, in that, in that uh, respect, but it's also important for our community. Without our four or 5,000 jobs in Tippecanoe County, that's going to take a huge hit to our economy. There's almost 17,000 manufacturing positions in Tippecanoe County alone, <clears throat> primarily focused in advanced manufacturing. So as you can see up here, we have a lot of great partners. We have Caterpillar, Kirby Risk. Um, we also have Wabash. Um, there's several others that have actually started coming to the table. Some of our suppliers are doing the same thing, trying to get this development. After they take some classroom education, we bring them into the workforce and put them into to an internship program. So they actually spend nine weeks with this current grant. They spend nine weeks in an internship learning how to build the vehicle, learning how to do advanced manufacturing work. And I can tell you, there is a lot of self-selection out of the program. It's not exactly what they thought. It's a lot harder than what they thought. Okay, it's, it's not an easy task. You can't walk in and, and do the job, right? <laughs> and think, oh, this is great. I'll go home after my 10 or 12 hours of work and have no problems. It's a lot harder than that. So this kind of program helps people identify what they want to do with their careers. Now, if advanced manufacturing doesn't work out, the, the wonderful part about the educational piece of this program, it gives them the opportunity to take those skills on to other positions throughout the community. It may be of a tier two or tier three supplier or even to other positions in, in uh, the community. So uh, the Ready to Work Grant is a great opportunity for us and we want to continue to develop it and do more of the RAMP program. Uh, we have two more years left in the grant, Brooklyn, is that right, or three? Three, three more, wow, I'm selling myself short. Uh, three more years left on the grant and hopefully we can utilize and put to, get, put to work almost 800 people, which would be a fantastic feat and then continue this program, we want to develop this for all of our intake and our workforce and use this skill throughout the state. So, thank you very much. Anything you want to add, Roger, Brooklyn? Yeah, I, want, I think Brooklyn is going to talk more about the internship part. Yeah. All right, so it's hard to see, but um, with this program, we do have a service flow. Um, and I'll give you an example of, of one individual that has uh, come through the program. Um, this individual's name, we'll say, is Brian. Uh, Brian was homeless. He was a vet, um, had PTSD. Um, he came in, his glasses were taped on the side. I mean, they were falling off. Um, he, was, he was taking the bus. And um, so Brian came in, he came to an orientation. He learned more about ready to work. During that time, he filled out a pre-application, which gave us a real-time snapshot of who Brian is, where he's at, what's his barriers, and from that information, we were able to gather um, whether or not he'd be a good fit. So is Brian ready, willing, and able to make a change, and does he have the ability to benefit? From that, then Brian met one-on-one -on -one with our career planner. That was an intensive session where we talked more about his barriers and, and started making those plans and decided whether or not he'd be a good fit for our program. Um, I do want to note at this time, Everything happens at our one-stop center, at our work one. And so at this time, he was co-enrolled, so, which has been a bonus for us because then if we don't feel that they have the ability to benefit, they can also work with the case manager at the work one as well. So we ensure that they can get those services that they need to make themselves successful in whatever sector that they would like to go into. But we decided Brian has the ability to benefit would be a great fit for the Ready to Work program. From that, then Brian started two weeks of what we call our Ramp Affinity Group Sessions. This is a two-week session where we focus on soft skills and work readiness. So it's a, basically like a two-week boot camp um, for those things to get them career ready. Um, so they come to that for two weeks. They are not paid, uh, but they, do, they can um, obtain supportive services at that time. And if they successfully complete that, pass a five-panel drug test, pass work keys at a level three, they can then go into um, what we call our intervention. So that's on-the-job training. Um, we also have our internships. Um, we have started internships on the west side with Purdue Polytechnic, um, and that is at the SIA Learning Center. Um, we're also right now getting ready to launch on the east, and that will be again at the Work One, and we're partnering with Ivy Tech Kokomo in those efforts. Um, and so those, those are the interventions that we look at after they successfully complete uh, those two weeks of soft skills work readiness. Um, once they get into classroom training, um, 
they, the classroom training at Purdue Polytechnic is five weeks. Uh, once they successfully um, complete that training, we have an internship fair. We invite employers to that. The participants in the program get the opportunity to interview with local manufacturers in hopes to obtain either um, an employment, direct hire, uh, OJT, or an internship. Most right now are doing internships. Um, again, I want to note that we do um, do paid training, so they do get paid during their classroom time, and they also get paid uh, during their internship. Um, our hopes are when they successfully complete that, then they obtain full-time employment with that employer. So when Brian came through, that's, those are the points that he went through, and he was able to successfully obtain employment through that. Um, again, here we talk about the plan. This is just really a snapshot of what participants get when they come through the program. So again, the intensive coaching, that ramp networking group, um, short-term training options through premier um, educators, Purdue Polytechnic, Ivy Tech Kokomo, um, different interventions, internships, OJT's direct placement. The biggest thing, you know, employer-driven curriculum um, and constructed curriculum. Uh, training located at the employer site you know, hands-on simulation training while they're in the classroom. Um, these are all the things that these individuals get to experience uh, while they go through the Ready to Work program. Now we've talked about some challenges of the grant, but there's also challenges uh, with our participants. Not only are they long-term unemployed, but there's change involved in that. And change is hard, it's difficult. You know, it's getting out of your routine, routine. it's taking off that security blanket. Um, you know, it requires that we leave our comfort zone and ready to work really helps them get ready for that change and help them maintain that momentum and, and have hope that they can be successful. So you may ask, how do we do that? Um, again, here you can see we assess for change. Um, we do that when they come in for the orientation and for their one-on-one -on -one with their career planner. Um, we look, are they ready, willing, and able? Um, we identify barriers at that time. We ensure, do they have the ability to benefit? Um, we also plan for the change. We plan for the change through the Ramp Affinity group sessions, the Soft Skills Work Readiness Boot Camp. Um, we do that through the classroom training. Um, and that's where we really plan for that change and, and, and make those plans in order to let them be successful for, for employment. Um, and then sustaining the change. Can they take what they've learned and adapt it to, to the production floor? Um, so that's where we really look at that. We have follow-up that we do. We have a career planner and a job developer that not only follows up with participants, but follows up with the employers um, a year after they've started either that internship, direct hire, OJT placement. Um, all of that, is to look at um, sustaining that change through this program. However, I think the biggest success and what makes Ready to Work most successful is, as it says, working in concert. It has taken uh, employer needs, identifying those, participant needs, um, our one stop, education partners, our community, all of that working in concert has been able to put those pieces together in order to make us one strong system and to give the individuals going through this program hope. Um, as you may be able to see on this slide, here we have 18 participants from class three. Um, a lot of people have talked about success stories. There's 18 success stories for us. Um, these individuals all went through the two weeks of soft skills work readiness training. These individuals had just completed um, their classroom training and were all placed into internships in which they're all still in. Um, so again, this program really, um, it takes a lot of moving parts and a lot of moving hands, but it's all of those coming together that helps us to create uh, this type of success for these long-term um, unemployed and to give these individuals hope. Thank you. I don't know whether we're running short of time. Who's the timekeeper? Uh, do we have more time or do we have time for questions? Jackie, how are we doing? You're good. We're... We got time for questions? We can take two questions. Two questions, okay. I'll, I have a question. I, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted to ask you to talk, uh, or either of you, uh, to talk about the, uh, the curriculum, what is actually the content that's being taught in, uh, that would help in the you know, um, transportation vehicle uh, industry? Sure. 
it, basically what we uh, teach them in the classroom is we teach them the, some of the uh, terms of Kaizen, so how to improve critical thinking, problem solving, um, a lot of just basic hands-on dexterity skills uh, and professionalism <laughs> and teamwork. Uh, for those of you know what work keys are, we have a teamwork component that tests it. We have a lot of people that score very, very low on teamwork. I don't know if it's the phones, you know, that everybody's living in the silo world of just texting people instead of communicating and working together, but we need to, we're trying to scale up that teamwork as well, so. Other questions? Going once, going twice, we're gone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great, thank you so much. Um, now we're gonna take a little turn to the IT world uh, and hear from a colleague at TechPoint, Sally Reasoner. Sally, welcome, glad to have you here. Okay, I, I know that I am coming just before the end of the day, so I promise to bring a lot of energy and to keep it pretty short and concise. So I, once my slides get up here, I, no, they're not. Oh. See, here we go. Okay, my fault. Um, so I am here today from TechPoint, and thank you to Claudia for laying the the map of Central Indiana Corporate Partnership. That's where that's where TechPoint falls. Um, and thank you all for for listening. I'm really really passionate about the Xterm program. It's been my baby at TechPoint. Um, so I love I love to share what we've built and the results in hopes that other um, other regions can start similar programs. So first, what is TechPoint? What do we do? Our mission as an organization, we are small but mighty. We are five people on staff. Actually, we just increased to six this week. Um, we are on a mission to strengthen the tech ecosystem in the city of Indianapolis, in the state of Indiana. And we do that in three main pillars. Um, talent, which is what I'm here to talk to you about. Community, so how do we amplify the story of technology in the state of Indiana? And then last is scale up. So how do we take those, those companies that have been really successful and fuel them with everything they need to grow and, and to be the next exact target or to be the next um, big tech company in the state? So I think someone mentioned this earlier, or several folks have mentioned this earlier, to be demand driven. And that is exactly the place that we come from. So I was brought on to TechPoint two years ago um, to figure out what the demand for tech talent in the state was. And so that's where we started and we built the programs off of that demand. So here are just some quick stats. Um, so from 2009 to 2014, um, Computer-related jobs, so that's anything from software developer to graphic designer, we relied on ONET categorizations. Um, there was 17% growth amongst computer-related jobs. And just to give you context, if you look at jobs as a whole, there was 9% growth in that, in that time period. So tech jobs are growing really, really fast. Um, to give you a, an idea of what that looks like in context, in the year 2014, there were over 10,000 computer-related job postings in central Indiana alone. Um, and then last, 82% um, of those computer-related jobs require some sort of uh, bachelor's degree or higher. So our companies are focused on hiring um, degreed talent. So with the demand being so um, so wide, and, and, and that's Indiana focused. To give you context from the nation, I think this helps. Um, the, we looked at Bureau of Labor Statistics projections for computer related jobs leading up to the year 2020. So from 2014 to 2020, um, they projected 1.4 million net new computer related jobs across the entire United States. And in that same time period, we will have graduated 
400,000 students with computer-related degrees. So that's a million-person talent gap that, that we're up against. And as a state in the Midwest, we don't have oceans or um, mountains to, to attract people here. So, so we needed to really focus in on um, how do we attract and retain this talent to central Indiana. So that's what our, our, our focus is. Um, extern, at its most basic core, it's the story of companies, community, city coming together to build a massive place-based talent attraction and retention initiative. Um, and I don't, I don't know that we can, oh, we are gonna try it, okay, let's see. The video explains it much better than I could, so we're going to play that really quick. It is. If only there were an extern here to fix this. <laughs> it's okay if we can't play it. Okay, I'll proceed as if we, if we can't get the video to play. Um, and, and you can check it out later. It's techpoint.org slash extern that has the video. But essentially, extern can be boiled down into four main parts. Um, and so how, how we got started is we uncovered all of this data around the tech community in central Indiana and why we are a statewide initiative. I want to be clear on that. We focused on central Indiana to build the model. And that's because in our research, we found that um, 46 percent of technology related jobs or those computer related jobs are located in central Indiana. The next highest MS MSA was Fort Wayne with 7 percent. So there is a high concentration in central Indiana so we figured this would be the best place to test the model um, and, and to build, build the formula that then we can share with other metros to, to hopefully replicate um, programs similar to extern around the, around the state of Indiana. I think we're still trying here. It's on a YouTube video and we're still in session. So it is. OK, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, OK, so um, we, don't, we don't need to mess with the video. It's really OK. I can just kind of give the brief flyover. And I promise to be the shortest. And it's not doing too well on that. Awesome. So, um, so when we went to our companies, we had, and I'm sure, sure, in all of your regions, you have companies who are are, are of similar um, capacity. So we had we had the the sales forces and the interactive intelligences of the world who had these really well oiled recruitment machines. But then on the flip side of that, um, we have a lot of startups in central Indiana, a lot of companies that are too busy building. They don't have the robust HR teams to be out on campus recruiting. And so we figured we could serve two roles. We could be a recruitment sweetener. So how do we get folks to say yes to Salesforce and interactive intelligence? But then how do we create a um, a platform to connect student, high achieving students to our tech companies. So we are both. We are both a sweetener and, and a platform. Um, but the platform piece is what, I'll, what I will talk to you most about today. So we, I, I am the recruiter. I go out on campus and I share the story of technology in Indianapolis. And we kind of flip the recruitment model on its head. And this is something that other cities haven't done. So we haven't faced any competition from other metros yet. Um, although I know Columbus, Cincinnati, St. Louis are all eyeing similar, t similar programs. 
But I can tell the story that in the past 10 years, we've had 14 tech acquisitions and IPOs totaling over $5 billion in market value. I can tell students that we, we are a business to business town. So we don't have the consumer facing brands that they have in San Francisco, um, but they're, they're solving problems that are equally as complex and difficult right here in Indianapolis. And that they touch the technology that our companies produce on a daily basis, they just don't know it. Um, and so with that story, we're able to, to be a magnet for talent. And then what we do to, to, um, to get students to choose Indianapolis over offers in Seattle or San Francisco, New York City, which we've done. We've had students turn down Yahoo, Yelp, Microsoft to take jobs in central Indiana with companies that they had never heard of is by packaging a summer in the city experience that a community when they come together can collectively create much better than one company could do independently. And so what that experience looks like is um, first and foremost that work experience. We know that the work-based learning is critical for the student and we take students from freshman to senior um, or to junior levels so that is the most important piece of the program and we do not touch the work day that is that is the sacred territory for the company and the student to work on together um, and we do vet similar to Connexus, we, we vet with companies to make sure that they have um, the quality level work for students and we also help companies begin internship programs so Teradata is a great example they when they were a primo, they had a robust intern program. Um, after the acquisition to Teradata, they let that slip and they hadn't hired technical interns for quite a few years. So I went in and I worked with their team based on the successful models that I had insight to via the extern program and helped them start, start uh, restart an internship program at Teradata. Um, so that's the most important thing. Then, then second is housing. And I know not every, um, every metro can do this, but we're fortunate with IUPUI right there downtown that we can provide housing for the students. And that allows um, a community and connect to, it makes Indianapolis sticky. Um, they, once they have friends and they're out exploring the city, they're not the group of three interns who um, depend on their company for all social interaction. They have each other.